and good afternoon, everyone. You are welcome to another amazing session of our online series in this month of February. So if you have been following us for some time, you would have observed that we are, we do this online series monthly to engage um, our communities and to help people to adapt efficiently to the post COVID-19 era. And we have been running this series for some time with, with our focus on rethinking our social economy. Over time, we have been able to look at several topics, you know, um, we've, we've engaged with, with a number of um, facilitators and who, who have been able to, to, to change our focus and to help us to adapt to these growing times. And um, I want to believe that it has been inspiring for this and for this uh, this time. So today we'll be looking at another important topic. But before then, uh, we'll, we'll take a review of um, some of the topics we've considered before now. We've considered topics like building leadership capacity in the new economy. We've also considered developing a winning personal growth strategy. We've considered repositioning youths for growth in the post COVID-19. We've considered coping with the effects and challenges of crisis in post COVID-19 era. And today we'll be looking at another very important topic that relates directly to the post COVID-19 era. And we are hoping that um, all our listeners will be engaged because um, this topic speaks directly to this time that we are. Today we'll be looking at um, positioning and reskilling for global opportunities. Positioning and reskilling for global opportunities. And this topic will entail um, the various skills that we need to adjust to, how we need to adapt ourselves for varying global opportunities that are out there for us. And I want to assure you that we have someone who is going to engage us, someone who we are going to be learning from. I'll be introducing him. His name is Mr. Taiwo Akin Lami. Mr. Taiwo Akin Lami is the principal partner, Gilgal Partner, a social development law firm. And he has done tremendous work in, in his field with a lot of impacts that can be recorded. Since 1997, uh, Taiwo Akin Lami, co-founder co and CEO, Power Parenting Company, Children's Human Rights and Protection, and Family Strengthening Expert and Advocate. Parenting according to social protection protagonists. He's, he's also the convener, annual WOW, that is Women Working with Children Conference and Town Hall Meetings. So he's, he's also the convener of annual SAFE, SAFE VAR, a, a children conference organized in commemoration of World Children's Day in November 20. He has been inspiring his world with his story of aborted childhood, empty young childhood, and change pilgrimage. He has, he has seen seemingly impossible changes in his life since 1997, and he today defines change as an ever-present possibility for anyone who is ready to take responsibility. We will not be able to exhaust um, all of his profiles, we'll be sharing his, his uh, social media handles and even his blog site for you to go and, and take closer look at his work and also to, to follow him up. So today we'll be having him in our midst to discuss a very important topic, repositioning, reskilling for global opportunities. So ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome <laughs> our guest, Mr. Taiwo Akinlami. Um, can you hear me? Good no, afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, sure, we're doing great today. It's my pleasure to be with you this 
afternoon, <laughs> I have to, I have to, you know, be careful. Where I am, it is morning. As a matter of fact, it's eight o'clock my time, but it's uh, it's three o'clock your time. You're um you are six hours ahead of me, so I'm confused about this morning afternoon. So please don't mind if I if I interchangeably use morning or afternoon. I'm trying to try and use, and I also know that everyone joining us might not also be from Nigeria. There may be people from other parts of the world, you know, joining us. So having said that, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be part of this uh, this uh, conversation. Uh, for me, uh, it is important that at this time we have conversations like this for the purpose of. Um, making sure that we are ready for whatever comes. You know, um, at the end of the day, uh, preparation precedes opportunities. As a matter of fact, the opportunity you do not see, you cannot take advantage of. So when you prepare, it gives you the, the leverage. It gives you the, the, the advantage to be able to take, a, to take hold of opportunities. Let me start by saying that um, when we talk about global opportunities, it is important for us to first understand that the world has become a global village. The world is now a village. It's a global village where everything happens uh, at the push of a button. Now, there are people in Nigeria who are working for companies abroad. They, they, work, they work for companies abroad. They have not left the shores of Nigeria. Internet has eliminated the 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 um the problem and the limitation of visa and the limitation of immigration people now work from different parts of the world people are in pakistan india and they are working for companies in the us they are working for companies in different parts of the world the most important thing is for us to understand that even before covid-19 the world has shifted uh since you know we are in the age of the internet the internet of things and as Mr. Lakulishnoya has argued, whatever you are doing right now that does not have the technology side, is, does not have a future. He says that you should not see yourself as an NGO who uses tech. You should not see yourself as a young person uh, who is running a business who uses tech. You see yourself as a tech person, or as a tech company, or as a tech NGO who is solving a problem, which means technology has become a major tool in solving problems today. So it is important that we understand that and we understand that clearly. So when we talk about global, we are, we are talking about the, we must respect the advent of the internet, of the new media. You know, um, before now, for you to be engaged in, um, in, for example, if you're an actor, you're an artist, you're a comedian, if there's no show, if um, nobody is organizing a show, you are not able to. You are not able to be relevant. The likes of Alibaba started this whole like this whole thing about stand-up comedy, and you needed a TV, exorbitant, exorbitant TV time, uh, paying for TV airtime. You need a crew. You need a whole lot of things. You need an event. If you don't have a TV program, then you need an event. If you do a TV program, it's for you to be visible enough so that people can get you for their events. But another set of guys came who focused on just with their phone and Instagram. They started another industry entirely, completely. Another expression, maybe you call them IG comedian, you know, because they're not stand-up comedian. Maybe you call them uh, um, internet comedian or whatever. Those guys are in the forefront now guarding 3 million people, 1.5 million people, and all of that, and making a whole lot of difference, reaching out to an audience that is beyond the shores of Nigeria. So don't, uh, don't get confused when you hear global. I don't have visa. I don't have... Now, that's another expression of globalization, being able to travel. As a matter of fact, the model that uh, ISIS used, ISIS back on what they call uh, uh, real term retail terrorism. And what did they do? After 9 11, it became difficult for people to assess, you know, uh, immigration became tightened up because America saw what happened and 
it instructed them. And what happened? It was difficult for people to move. What did ISIS do? ISIS began to mobilize people on Twitter, on Instagram, Twitter, mainly Facebook and the rest of that. And what did they find? They began to mobilize people within their own countries who will not need to travel to carry out attack. So most of the attacks that have been carried out in America, for example, after 9-11 were carried out by people in America who were radicalized via the internet. That's how powerful, you know, this is. So they use that tool and they got people on their side and they got people to carry out terrorism. The terrorism carried out in France, very terrible ones. The one carried out in America, the one carried out in Britain were carried out by people who did not travel. They didn't need to leave the shores of their country to be radicalized, to be indoctrinated. They did not need to. And they became, they became indoctrinated within their own country. And what happens at the end of the day was that they were able to carry out what Osama bin Laden needed 19 people. 19 people carried out the 9-11 uh, attack to train, to play for plane and all of that. What they needed to do with 19 people, they ended up doing with few people who did not need to get visa, who were radicalized in their own country. So please, what I'm, the reason why I'm starting this way is for you to do away with your excuses, to say that, how do I go global? I don't have visa. How do I go global? I've never been to the embassy. How do I go global? I've never uh, gotten to the shores of the airport before. Now, when you are faithful in the little that the internet provides, when you are faithful in the little that uh, um, um, the fourth industrial revolution provides, then you are preparing yourself for global attention. You know, uh, so that is the number one thing I want to say to you. So when we talk global, we are talking about the world, and we are talking about the fact that the world has come to you on your tablet, on your phone, on your i on on your iPad, on 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 your laptop. Even if you don't have a laptop. At least you can manage an Android phone, you know, for starters. So the question, therefore, is this. When we talk about reskilling and routine, what are we talking about? Since 2013, I've worked with, now, since 2005, I started working with international organizations based in Nigeria. I started working with UNICEF, British Council, since 2005. UNICEF, British Council, um, SOS Students, Village International, different organizations who are located in Nigeria, but are not Nigerian organizations. I started, I started working with them since 2000 2005. And um, in 2017, Google and Facebook recognized my work and they invited me to Dublin. Why did they invite me? They wanted me to, to they wanted to present my project to the world. Who were the people they were pre presenting my project to? They were presenting the project to people from the Middle East, people from Europe, and people from Africa. And we had observers from all over the world. And um, I stood in the office of Google uh, uh, that April in 2017 to present to the world what we are doing. But the truth of the matter is that that which went to the world began from here, began from Nigeria. The faithfulness in doing the things we were doing, you know, putting those things online making it available to people, pushing the frontiers and all of that, working with all of those organizations in Nigeria, maximizing the opportunities they gave to us. You know, because if they gave us opportunity and we messed it up, there's no way we're going to continue to work with them. It's difficult for you to be working for an organization in 2005. I've been working for UNICEF in 2005 as a consultant. I'm still working with them till today. I've been working with the British Council since 2013 as a consultant. And I'm still working with them till today. There's a level of behavior there's a level of behavior that guarantees that you know your commitment you may not know everything that you ought to do but you know some things that you have to do that will keep you in the in the side as a person that offers value before your before your clients and before the people you relate with so this is the point so since 2013 in particular I've been facilitating for the British Council this thing called core and transferable skill. Just core, core skill and competencies. Now, research has found there are two kinds of skills. Uh, there are two kinds kind of kind of skills. Number one, 
The number one skill is you have what we call the hard skill. That's technical skill. Technical skill. That is the skill of a lawyer to know the law. The skill of a doctor to know medicine and know how to carry out operation. The skill of, um, of a carpenter to be able to make furniture and, and deliver it. The skill of a speaker to be able to speak the way I'm speaking right now. Uh, those are hard skills, hard skills. Now, there are technical skills. There are skills that you learn. Are you getting it? That you learn, which is the, which you call your career. I'm a teacher, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm a speaker, I'm a counselor, I'm an emotional intelligence trainer, I'm an NGO person, and all of that. Hard skills. But there's another type of skill, which is the soft skill. Soft skills are the skills that has to do with your capacity to make things happen your capacity to make things happen you see because there are lawyers who don't make things happen they have the hard skills but they can't make anything happen there are doctors who don't make things happen they have all these skills hard skills, but they don't make it happen soft skills speaks to things like negotiating skills are you able to negotiate speak speak to things like empathy are you able to empathize emotional intelligence Soft skills speaks to things like, like innovation, creativity, communication. As a matter of fact, British Council identifies six core skills, which are critical and which are which you must also identify as soft skills. Now, hard skills is everywhere. Everybody has a skill. What people don't have is soft skills. What differentiate people in the world is not hard skills. Many, there are many people who are able to deliver at the level of hard skill, but they are not able to deliver at the level of soft skill. And, and this is what has happened. Now, we, we, uh, 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 before COVID, Jack Ma says, by the year 2030, over a million dollars will they will be lost to machine. They will be lost because some jobs will just evaporate, they won't exist again, there will be no need for them. Now, he advised that what people need to focus on more than hard skills is soft skill, the soft part of life. And I'm going to be dwelling on that today, very important. He advised Jack Ma is, you know, Alibaba is, is the founder and the owner of Alibaba, one of the richest men in China. So he, he signed that note, signed that note of warning. It is also important to know that when he says that we know when Jack Ma's job will be lost, he did not say people who were doing the job will die. No, it's not according to death. They will be, their skills will become obsolete. When their skills become obsolete, you know, it cannot be used. Those skills cannot be used. Are you getting it? So skills cannot be used. The best thing becomes, becomes even the organization. So when they are rising, when they are downsizing, they are right sizing, what they are saying is that at this point, your skill is outdated. Now, some skills even be a bit useful when organizations are right sizing, when people are losing their jobs, or, or when people are not able to start a new business, or their businesses are going down and they, they don't know what next to do. The problem is not even that they may not they may have a type of hard skill, but the problem is that it may not be at the level of a cutting edge, cutting edge form. You know, are you getting it? A footballer can be formed, but he's not in top form. So when they are when they are deciding which footballer to sell or which one to retrench, they may have four strikers, and these guys are good strikers, but in the in that organization or in that team, they are looking for the one with the sharp, with the sharpest reflex, who picks things, you know, at the speed of a thought. That's what they are looking for. So they are looking at the four strikers. They are good. Four of them are good, but to choose, they have to look at the one with that has a cutting edge capacity, that has the sharpest reflex. That's the one they are going to be looking for. If if so, 
you are still a striker. You are still, you know, playing football. But the problem is that you are not able to strike at the level that will deliver the best of results to the organization. So what did they do? They get rid of you. They get rid of you. And you saw, so despite the fact that you have a level of skill, then there's a problem. So the point is, when we talk about hard skill, hard skill today has been overrated. And I tell you, it does not deliver as much as soft skill deliver. As a matter of fact, Harvard University has done research and they have said that, they have said that for you to get on, to be at the top of your profession, for you to be at the top of your business, you need 80% of, of capacity in soft skill and only 20% in hard skill. Ziegler many years ago said that he has related with people at the highest level, people, uh, CEOs, Fortune 500 CEOs, people who are top leaders in politics and people who are top leaders in, in, in different spheres of life. Great civility, people that are able to relate, interpersonal relationships. They know how to start a conversation. They know what to say, what to say. They know how to take hold of opportunity. Do you know there's a lot that accrues to you if you are someone who can relate? You can relate, you are charismatic. Now, being charismatic can be natural, it can be learned. That you're able to strike conversation, you're able to talk to people. You know what distance to maintain. <laughs> you know what distance to maintain. You don't need COVID to tell you that you need to maintain, you know, three meters or two meters. You know that there is an area of study that has to do with, with proximity of conversation. It's big. It's big. When you go to the internet, when you go to dedicated pages to how you're supposed to understand in conversation, for example, if you appear in the, in, 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 in the White House at, and you have the opportunity of meet, meeting the American president, throughout the conversation, you don't put your hands in your pocket. You don't. Because the training is that when you put your hands in your pocket, maybe your best pocket or your side pocket, they really want to do that something. They're going to wrestle you down. Now, if you are preparing for the world, it is important that you don't carry around your ability to code. I code good. I can speak yes. I can I can I can design website good. I can do all of these things powerful. How do I begin to prepare myself to to take the word? Now today there's what they call uh, uh, accent reduction. For example, if you want to perform at the global level, there's a way you need to speak. You don't need to change. Like uh, Mr. Lacroix was having a conversation with me yesterday. That somebody like Okonjo Wella, for example, speaks normal English, but she speaks clearly. She chooses her word. And for you to operate at the global level, your communication is also very, very important. The way you present yourself, the, your adjectives and all of that, critical. So I'm going to be touching on those six fundamental core skills, which also constitute soft skill that I think it to pay attention to now if you are going to be able to make a difference. It's good for you to to understand how to code. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not. Um, I'm not de-emphasizing that. It's good for you to be interested in being a political figure. You want to change Nigeria. I'm not de-emphasizing that. It's good for you to be a lawyer, a very powerful lawyer. I'm not de-emphasizing that. But what I want to talk to you right now, Krika, they, they, they are the things that will make a difference in this century. They are the things that will make a difference post-COVID. Uh, and, and when you talk about post-COVID, that is a nebulous declaration because we have now been told that COVID is coming to stay with us for some time. It's going to be with us for some time. So COVID has already taken its effect right now. It has taken its toll on jobs, on opportunities, and a whole lot of things. And what is happening today in our world is that opportunities keep shrinking. Developed countries are dealing with economic downturn as a result of what we are dealing with. Nigeria, again, the country which we, the country 
uh, uh, which I come from, Nigeria also has again declared another recession. So the economy has shrunk. No, though the reason why the economy is shrinking in Nigeria is, is because of the corrupt practices of most of the Nigerian politicians, most of them. That is why economy, because Chatham House has now told us that between 1960 and today, over $500 billion have been stolen from Nigeria. Stolen. Stolen. So when uh, 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 Gandhi says, Gandhi says there's enough, there's enough for everybody's need, but not enough for everybody's greed. What is that? Anytime you see need, particularly in the third world country, in Africa, it is because certain people's greed is sitting on what is supposed to be the common wealth of the people. That is not my conversation for today, but that is a symposium discussion for another day. But whether it's a symposium discussion for another day or something we should be discussing today, it is important for us to understand clearly that opportunities are shrinking and it's going to be the survivor of the fittest. Many years ago, uh, 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 people, you know, did not see this coming, right? But the truth of the matter today is that the reality is upon us. Opportunity is not for everybody. Uh, even in Nigeria, people are being retrenched. Banks are retrenching people. A whole lot of things are happening. So you need to be sharp. You need to be on top of your game. And if you're going to be on top of your game, you need to understand certain basic, if you don't even know the skills you are supposed to acquire, how do you begin to work towards this? So let me discuss these six fundamental skills with you uh, as identified by the British Council. And I will, uh, I will round up and I will take some questions. Now, number one, critical thinking and problem solving. You have to be able to think critically, think critically, Thinking critically is to understand that things are not as they first appear. You have to take another look and see whether there is another way of doing these things. When stand-up comedy was the order of the day, and people needed to go to, their, to a place, a hall, for them to get good comedy, some people began to think critically. They wanted to solve a problem how you can get good comedy from the comfort of your room. So what did they do with the little that they had? They began to do something. And today, they are the people who are in the industry. They did, they canceled, they, 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 they crossed the hurdle of auditioning. They auditioned themselves to the people on Instagram, to the people on Facebook, on YouTube, and they were accepted. It is interesting to know, note that the most followed uh, the most fun, the, 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 the organization with the highest subscribers in Nigeria today is Mark Angel, over 7 million. They are making a lot of money and making people laugh at that level. Over 7 million subscribers. They are the highest in Nigeria. Mark Angel is the highest in Nigeria. So they, they, they thought, created a path. They decided not to follow the crowd. How do you acquire that skill? That is critical thinking and problem solving. Very, very critical. You have to begin to develop yourself in a way that you can spot opportunities. As a matter of fact, not even spotting opportunities, what those guys who went to Instagram and YouTube did was that they created opportunities. They created it. The opportunity was not existing. It was not supposed to be there. There was no precedent. It was existing, but there was no precedent. There, were, there was, nobody was showing the path. People like Wole Arole, people like uh, Wole Agba, people like um, um, this lawyer, um, not many of them, MC like and all of them, they went that path. Number two is communication and collaboration. Now, you need, you need to understand, and in the world you are alone, you cannot do anything alone. So the whole idea that is paramount that is popular today for community collaboration, communication and collaboration, your ability to communicate, the ability to express yourself. What are you doing to learn communication, including verbal and non-verbal communication? There are books on verbal communication. There are books on non-verbal communication, gesticulation. All of these things exist. What are you doing to improve your communication? How do you communicate? How do you speak? When you speak, are you speaking with facts? 
Are you speaking with figures? Are you speaking with statistics? Or you are just speaking your mind? And please note, when you say, as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the poorest statements anybody can make. Who are you, as far as I'm concerned? No, so you can't be saying things like that. Your opinion has to be created along facts, along research. What research informs what you are saying? What research materials have you exposed yourself to? What have you learned? What are you learning from? Very important. Communication is a communication we speak to how you are communicating, but most importantly, communication we speak to why you are communicating. Most importantly, communication we speak to what you are communicating. What are you saying? Does it make sense? Now, if you are a local champion, you are able to convince people that are around you with some, what we used to call wisdom keys, and you just bamboozle them, this thing that you are saying, can it stand before global platform? Many years ago, even before we had global platform, I knew I prepared myself to be able to take the world. I prepared myself from the letters that we wrote, from the way we positioned the letter and all of that from the way where we work with UNICEF, the way we presented our presentation, the suggestions that we made to them, we knew that we were ready to take the word, though before the word came to us, we have already gone to find out what the word wanted and we were ready to give it to the world. Very, very important. Communication, if you, communication is the truth to collaboration, when you are not able to communicate, now look at what happens in the Tower of Babel. What happens in the Tower of Babel was that they were building a tower that would go to God. And the way God comes, scattered that project. God did not raise a finger, did not fight anybody, did not call a word, did not call Angel Michael, Angel Gabriel, and all of that. What did he do? He confused their language. Once their language was confused, the project was done. The project was scattered. Now, if you are not able to communicate very well, now, I do a lot of work in the area of talking to people about communication, and time will fail me today to go to the integrity of it because I don't have the time. But you see, communication is powerful. People are the word power. Hitler used the power of oration, communication. Uh, 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 Martin Luther King Jr., the power of oration, communication. As of 2008, nobody knew Barack Obama. And he had an opportunity to speak at the Democratic Party Convention, 2008. And that speech made, it, made a difference. How? You think that, so what has happened is that you think it was the day they told him he was to prepare a speech, he started preparing himself, which means all his life he has prepared himself. He was just waiting for the opportunity. And what happens to you is that opportunity will always come to you, or you will create opportunity opportunities in the area of your dominant preparation. Opportunity is going to come to you, or you are going to create opportunities in the areas of your dominant preparation. So, what are you preparing? What are you doing? What are you reading? What are you listening to? If you use all your life to watch Telemundo and you watch all those Nigerian movies and all of that, and at the end of the day, you are not asking yourself, what is this thing adding to me? What is it taking from me? Whatever does not add from me is taking from you. And whatever is taking from you is not adding to you. So it's important that you understand that carefully and you, 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 talk, you, you, you are able to communicate and you are able to collaborate, very, very important. Then we talk about citizenship. You know, when I was growing up, citizenship used to be a status, but today citizenship has become a skill. Now, what does that mean? It means that you, are, you, you become a global citizen, not by naturalization, but by the information that you have, by the information that you have, citizenship, you know, comes to you, please, can we, can, okay. Uh, I will take questions after now. And please, I'm not addressing you as to take a job. You know, we have to look beyond that. We have to look beyond the interview and all of these things. We have to look, because if you, if you, if you, if you limit yourself to interview, this is who you need to be. Let me tell you something. When you show up on the interview table, it is who you are that we show. I've attended many interviews. I've, I've been at, I've been at the border of a country where, where they were asking me all kinds of questions. That's an interview. If I fail in those questions, they were going to turn me back. But it's my ability to handle the situation to be calm. When you show up in the interview, please, I believe in interview skills, very, very important, but note, it is who you are, no matter how much you go and prepare a day before, two days before. When you show up in the interview table, they are going to, when they write, I'm not skills, 
that you need to go and gather. There are the things you need to become, that the things you need to become. Because every time you show up in life, it is who you are that shows up. It's not what you, it's not what you have crammed. People cram things and all of it, what did they do? They mess, they mess up big time. As a matter of fact, they get to where they're going to congregate those things and those things disappear because there is pressure. And when pressure occurs, it is what to know that we show up. It is who you are that we show up. What to cram will disappear. Fast, fast. So it is important that I state that. So please, and you want to ask me a question, hold on till I finish. I'll finish in another five, 10 minutes, I'll wrap up. Uh, yes, I'll wrap up and uh, I can take questions. So citizenship. Citizenship means you have information. Citizenship means you are able to adapt to any nation you find yourself. You know what is going on there. You have studied their culture. You have studied the way they think, the way they reason, the way they do things there. Now, when you go to Rome, you need to understand what works in Rome. If I meet someone from, from Britain, there are conversations I can begin to have because I understand how Britain works. If I meet somebody from the US, there's a way, there's a conversation I can have. Now, some of us, the only conversation we can have is with Nigerians. And as a matter of fact, even in that, we can have conversations like conversations in Nigeria. Even when we're discussing in Nigeria, some of us can have conversations like restructuring. Some of us can have conversations like democracy. Some of us can have some conversation like the difference between citizenship and indigenization. Those are, those are big conversations that are going on in Nigeria right now. And if you cannot have such conversation, you are not truly a citizen, you are not a round citizen of Nigeria. Now, citizenship has become a skill. It used to be a status. You should ask yourself, how does citizenship become a skill? It is a skill because you now need to learn how to fit in into any nation in which you find yourself. I'm not saying fit in as to destroy your nation. I'm saying fit in as to understand enough how this, how this nation works, what is going on there, and what you need to do to be able to take advantage of the opportunities in those places. Then we talk about creativity. Creativity, when we talk about creativity, most of that, people think it's about artists who are creative. No, it's finding another and a better way of doing things, another and better ways of doing things, improvement. That is creativity. That is creativity. How do you do things Better. So when you find yourself in a place, you have to be able to ask yourself the question, this thing that I've been asked to do, how do I do it better? You know, time will fail me to give you examples of what I've done. Well, when, when I qualified as a lawyer, nobody in my profession was talking about the rights of children. I was talking about the rights of, of, of women. Now, it wasn't common. I, I created that, that niche. Now, today, there's hardly anything UNICEF wants to do about the rights of children, about protection, even the Lagos state government in, uh, uh, that, that I've done in, in 19, in 2016, I worked with the Lagos state government to mainstream child rights. I worked with it in, in, since 2005, 2006, I worked with UNICEF to mainstream child rights education into the curriculum of Nigeria Institute of Journalism. Now that curriculum that we will develop for ND1, ND2 and postgraduate have been taught in all the universities in Nigeria today. Now, I was the only lawyer in their midst. The people working on that project were communication experts. Professor Izewuchi, who is a communication expert, the provost and the lecturers in Nigeria History of Journalism, and the, the, the Unduka Uba, who was the, who was the secretary of the Nigerian Guild of Editors. How did the lawyer find himself into that place? I'm not an expert in communication, but I built a level of relevance addressing a particular problem in a different manner, setting up a law firm, not setting up an NGO, because people say, what well, I should set up was an NGO. I said, no, I want to set up a law firm that address the issues of children and all of that. How did I find myself there? Because I built a level of relevance that other lawyers have not built, and I was able to get myself into that place since 2006, and we did that work for three years. And a few years after, I was the only one developing that same curriculum for the British Council. Now, note that I'm not an expert in curriculum development. I don't need to. I'm not an expert in, 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 in education. I don't need to. But what happens is that when they looked at my track record, that you have rubbed shoulders with 
with communi communication experts, and they saw the level of work we produced. They were confident to say, we want, though we produce that one in three years, they were confident to say, produce this one in 30 days. And by God's grace, we were able to deliver. So uh, 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 creativity is very, very important. How do we get another way of doing this? Then another thing we need to understand is another skill is digital literacy. Digital literacy. How do you know? Do you know what is going on online? Beyond being a subscriber to IG, being a subscriber to Facebook using Zoom, there are people now who, whose, whose fortune is coming from helping people to know people to know use, uh, 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 a digital world. People are organizing training on LinkedIn, or on how to use LinkedIn, on how to use a whole lot of a whole lot of a lot of a lot of resources online. You literate that when you go online, there are three kinds of people. Online. There's the phone seekers. There are many. They just go in there and be liking things, liking things, liking things. You know, and they they take picture and hoping that people will like it. The 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 people you call the people you call um um what do you call them you call them phone seekers then we have fraudsters online many of them then you have business minded people there are very few what category are you when you go online I think I've mentioned the six skills I've mentioned uh, um I've mentioned uh, have I mentioned all of them I've mentioned critical thinking and problem solving I've mentioned communication and collaboration I've mentioned um, digital literacy I've mentioned citizenship I mentioned creativity. The last one is leadership. Leadership. Very, very important. When we talk about leadership here, we are talking about your commitment to develop yourself, to lead yourself, to lead yourself, to lead yourself, your capacity to develop yourself, to lead yourself, to bury yourself in critical study. <coughs> Excuse me. To bury yourself in critical studies to read, to expand the frontiers of your mind, to look at the kind of documentaries you want to watch, to understand typical issues that are going on in our world. There's the debate on global warming. There's debate on COVID-19, is it real? There's debate on COVID-19 and, and vaccine. Is vaccine real or is it fake? There are arguments that there are, there are people that are called conspiracy theorists who have their own opinion and agenda on everything. They have their opinion and agenda on, on sexuality. They have their opinion and agenda on even COVID-19. Different things in this life. The question is, are you able to study enough not to become somebody that is swayed easily by every wind of doctrine? COVID-19 is China. Good. Another person comes and says it's not from China. It's no more from China. A vaccine cannot work. They don't have vaccine for cancer. They don't have found vaccine for different things. How can they find vaccine for COVID-19 in six months? You, you begin to carry that around. Another person comes and says, no, uh, uh, um, cancer is not a viral disease. So because of that, you can't be talking about uh, vaccine for virus. So you, you follow that one also. So in the morning, your opinion is one. By afternoon, your opinion is two. By evening, your opinion is three. You don't even know where you are going, you don't even know what you are doing. There's no opportunity for you. You must understand what is going on in the world enough to be able to lead yourself, to be able to lead yourself. Because it is now said that internet does not forget. Internet does not forget. Whatever you do, there's what we call internet footprint. So even the opinions you are sharing, even the things you are saying, where are you getting it from? What is your story? Do you know how to clarify a source? Do you know the meaning of fake news? Do you know when a news is fake and is real? And today, fake news has reached the highest level where I can be talking like this and be hearing me, and I'm not the one talking. My voice has been doctored, my picture has been doctored. And you are going to go out with that. Many years ago, Dr. Tai Sholari addressed the press conference many years ago. If you don't know Dr. Tai Sholari, maybe you need to check your history. Now, Dr. Tai Sholari addressed the press conference many years ago, claiming that Brian Babangida had an account and that after Nigeria holding a lot of billions and that that account, that report was published in Ebony, and it created a handbook and it brought him to NTA News, 30 million viewers, and they gave him a copy of the of the Ebony Life, and they asked him, Professor uh, Dr. Tai Sholari, if we are going to count brilliant people in Nigeria, what do you think your position would be? He 
said himself, I will be among the first ten. Among the first ten. Let's not go to Nigeria. We are going to count ten Nigeria. We are going to count Nigerians that are blind that had an account. Please, we have. The, if you see the copy, uh, uh, if you see a copy, if you see a copy of that uh, of that Ebony Life, that can you recognize it? He said yes. So they gave him a copy. By the time he looked at it, he kept looking for the story, looking for the story, looking for the story. He couldn't show them the story. Which me must have happened was that he heard something somewhere, and at his level, he went to town with it, and he boomerang, and it affected his credibility. It affected his, uh, his, 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 his credibility as a person. So for me, leadership is key. The governing skill of all these skills that I've mentioned is leadership is your capacity and what does it mean to lead in today many people might have defined leadership for you as many things the capacity to lead today is to be informed enough to know which opinion you want to follow and why you are following it and because there's the barrage of information out there barrage i mean uh, information happens at the speed of thought because the channel of churning out information has become over democratized so people come up with anything at any time just at the push of the button and they push it out and so for you not be a victim of of fake news for you to be able to lead yourself curate your opinion be at the right place at the right time say the right thing even when you show up at the interview table and you are they're asking you questions they're asking you questions like LGBTQI, what's your opinion? They're asking you questions like, like pro-life, pro-choice. They're asking you questions like who is a who is a right, who is a who is a, who is a liberal, who is a conservative. Are you able to have these conversations? And you can have it convincingly, I mean, enough not to get not to get into trouble and to get out of trouble if you get into one. Are you able this this concept that I'm mentioning to you, LGBTQI concept like um, pedophilia, to concept like concept like uh, 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 populism, post truth. These are concepts that are governing the world today. Liberalism, conservatism, all of these are conversations that are big in the world today. The 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 the, 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 the aid to Africa. What is the meaning of aid to Africa? Uh, 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 it does aid has any benefit for Africa? The, the, the people are discussing things like how to delink. People are talking, discussing things like how Africa can create its own economy, its own world, and all of that. These are conversations that are big out there. If you are not big on those conversations, if you are not even aware of what is going on, concept upon concept, it's going to be difficult for you to make a difference in the 21st century. It's going to be difficult for you to make a difference even in this COVID time. It's going to be difficult for you to make a difference going forward and so for for you to take advantage of global opportunities you you do not only need to develop these skills you need to be established on them so what i've done this afternoon is to open your eyes or to remind you of those skills it is now your responsibility to go and find how do i develop these skills what materials do i need to read who do i need to talk to what do i need to do so that i can know that i'm not only informed but i'm in top form to cite opportunities, to create opportunities, and to get advantage of opportunities, both at the local and global level. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Taiwo. Um, it has been it has been a learning period for us all, and um, you have totally redefined reskilling for us all. You know, it's, it's an amazing learning process for us. So one of the key um, points that we've learned thus far is that opportunity will always come to you or you prepare for the day of opportunity. That is wow. And we also learned that um, when pressure comes up, it is who you are that will show up. And that means that we need to equip ourselves with the right skills so that um, in the midst of um, pressure, and in the post-COVID, in the post-COVID uh, era, um, when we when we are faced with challenges, who we really are will emerge. All right, we've also learned about um, some some key skills that you've listed for us. About six of them: critical thinking and problem solving, communications and collaborations, 
citizenship, creativity, digital literacy, and leadership. So um, we believe that our um, listeners and participants do already have a good number of questions. So we'll be looking at some of them, sir, so that you can address, address them more. Okay, so I can take a few questions. I'm aware this, uh, this conversation is supposed to end in an hour. So let me see, I'll take one or two questions. Is that okay? That is okay. So we have one so question. So you can read the questions. All right, someone said, well said, sir. Please, I'd like to know some of those soft skills that practically made you <coughs> to stand out in the course of your work experience. Well, I've mentioned, from what I've mentioned, I mentioned them. For me, um, for me, uh, I, I pay close attention to, attention to leadership, which is the fact that um, I have to be able to lead myself. For, and for me to lead myself, the threat to leading yourself, because you have to lead yourself before leaving others, the threat to leading yourself is the polarization of opinions in this world today. If you don't know who you are, you're going to be swayed by every wind of doctrine to the point that you lose yourself to all of those doctrines. So for you, so, so the number one thing I pay attention to is, is, is um, to, to skill myself in the area of leadership. And when I'm talking about leadership, I'm saying being able to lead myself. And when I'm saying leading myself, I'm saying which opinion do I have? Where is it coming from? Who is the person behind the agenda? Am I pushing someone's agenda without knowing? Or am I pushing my own agenda? What is the truth that I'm pursuing? You know, when they want to, when they say, let him speak his truth, let him speak our truth. Truth is supposed to be a, uni a, 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 a truth is supposed to be uh, uh, absolute, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know. But many people believe that many things are truth and they, and they propagate it. And many people today are victims. For example, there's, there, there's one saying, you, you, you can't work for anybody and be rich. And that's one of the things Mr. Lapolesonia has, 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 um, has, um, has deported. You can't work for someone and be rich in life. That, that is a form of thinking that is going to make you, it's because everybody is going to start a business. It's not everybody is going to start a business. The, to, the, the CEO of, of Microsoft today is an employee of Microsoft. A billionaire. Are you getting what I'm saying? The CEO of billionaires. So, so there are a lot of jargons out there that we just you can't work for somebody and be rich. You can't work for somebody and be rich. That begin, and you you have a good job somewhere and you are able to adapt and, and they give you opportunity to grow and you are growing and they are showing you a lot of opportunities. It's something you just go and listen to one seminar that they will tell you you cannot work for somebody and be rich and nothing is pushing you it's not that you have another aspiration to go and start something but that thing in your head that voice in your head that is not allowing you to sleep you will now conclude god spoke to you to leave a job then you go and leave the job from the day you leave that job you may not be able to come out and say uh, this is what happened to me you will know as you are telling your resident you know you just made a major error and you go out there you are not able to survive so it is important that you understand that this idea that nobody can work for somebody and be rich or somebody and be fulfilled is a lie. It's not true. It's not a global truth. Globally speaking, there are people, Jack Welch worked for General Electric for 40 years. He worked for them. That's where he got his ready. But today you have Jack Welch MBA. Jack Welch worked for only one company. And he worked for that company. He rose from the lowest to become the CEO of the company. So you are working in a place where there's opportunity to grow. It may fail it before he became the C C CBN, CBN governor, was an employee of Zenit Bank, for God's sake. Before Sule Lamido became the, 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 the governor of CBN, he was an employee of First Bank. So please, it's important that we clear our minds. There's a lot of things out there. If you are not careful, you know, the following motivational speaker, they will just, today they lead you to this place, another day, they lead you to another place. And at the end of the day, you are confused. Self-leadership is number one. Who am I following? Who am I listening to? Whatever is said to you, you know, my mood of many years ago said, those who pass information also pass error. It is therefore your responsibility to to process information, to know which one you are going to take, which one you are not going to take. So when somebody tells you nobody can work for another person and be rich, 
you need to evaluate that 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 thought and ask yourself the question is it true how is it true and look at examples around the world if you don't have a process on inside you you don't read you are not knowledgeable you don't expose yourself to documentary you don't know what is going on in the world you are just going to take that and you are going to leave that conference and go and tender your letter of resignation okon do away like it was a business she has worked for people all her life so there are people we create businesses. There are people we work for people. You need to be able to understand where you are in the, and even if you are going to go and start your own business, there are things you need to put in place. There are variables you need to consider. You know that you just start. I hear somebody and go and carry and go and tomorrow I'm resigning. God has told me to move. And the book that I read says, the foolishness of a man surpasses his way and his heart rages against God. The foolishness of a man. So when you resign, things are not working. Go and be cursing God. And God is saying, I was not there. It's motivational speakers that spoke to you. I didn't speak to you. And you took the word of motivational speaker to be. Even when God speaks, God speaks according to his temperament, according to his value system. God, has, God says, nobody should do anything in a hurry. He also says, he said, he that hastens with his feet, we see. He that hastens with his feet, we see. You just hear somebody, you go out. So the most, the most critical skill you need today is to be able to lead yourself. It's for you to process information, for you to hear things and know which one do I want to hold on to, which one do I want to reject. Very, very important, so that you are not tossed to and fro. I can't have this that's what you are following. Another person came to my head, who are you? Which one are you evaluating? It's your responsibility to evaluate. Nobody can push me around. It's not possible. You can't. Um, and that has been for many years. For many years. I, when I started out to do what I'm doing, you can't be pushing me. If you say, let's jump, why? If you say, this is what is working now, how? That's question. And that's why I follow very few people, very few people, because I know there's a lot of jargon out there. Thank you. All right, thank you very much for that explanation. Um, from your explanation, a question came into my head. Uh, you gave a lot of um, case studies mentioning individuals who started from working with uh, and with organizations and then and they were able to make impacts now in this um, era what do you advise organizations and institutions to do should they should they hire and fire people with better skills or they should train um, the staff that they already have you know to upskill or to reskill them what is your advice what is your well, take? Well, well, the, you know, uh, the state of the organization, the reality of the present crop of, of staff will determine what they do. Are you getting it? So if, for example, an organization is doing some, for example, an organization, there, there is, um, there is, um, there's, there are organizations now who have opened their doors since, since February last year, particularly in America. Now they've not opened their doors and <laughs> everybody is online and in that instance they have to choose who they, who they want to work with and who they are not going to work with and at the end of the day it is about those who are ready to move those who are ready to learn new skills new opportunities those are the people uh, to, to take hold of the new opportunities so organizations note that organizations have their prerogatives organizations have their objectives organizations have the key principles that control their operations. So at the end of the day, it is about you yourself, knowing what you represent to the organization. It is about you yourself, knowing where you stand with the organization in terms of personal development, because the, 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 this is the time, you know, there's the, something we used to say, uh, which was what uh, Mr. Lacroix began to say uh, when we we're running an organization. He said, if you yourself you have not survived, you can't promise another person survivor. If an organization is trying to survive, you know, look at organizations. I watch documentaries of organizations in Nigeria who were, who were event planners. But not only event planners, they were writing out equipment. Now one of them has just gone to get a loan to get new, new equipment that would be the, the leading equipment, equipment in the industry. No sooner that he got the loan, and that that those those uh, uh, those those equipments were shipping, then COVID started. No event. 
that kind of organization at that point has entered survival mode. It has to look at it. And all those boys who go to set up those, 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 uh, those, uh, all those engineers who go to set up those, uh, uh, what do you call it, those equipment, do you think they have a job? They can have a job, no matter how good. The organization can force, okay, let's give you 50% of your salary. And let's hope that this COVID will go off, uh, 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 go away, and we can start events. After a while, what is going to happen? <laughs> if, if, the, if, the, if the thing does not come, come in, what is going to happen? They themselves need to survive because they, before they can help other people to survive, what about people running a hospitality business? So at the end of the day, so if, for example, you are an engineer now who set up for King Sonia Day, you set up for events, and now this thing has happened, and you don't have another skill, you don't have another skill, you are not creative enough to find something else to do. There's something the organization can do to help you. You yourself, your conscience cannot go and be asking them for money when you know that they, they are not working. And you get what I'm saying? So it comes back to the different level at which the organizations you are talking about is his. Then your own capacity to retool and reinvent yourself so that you can be relevant at this time. All right, thank you very much for that explanation. I want to encourage all the participants um, so that you don't miss out on this content. Remember to follow our social media handles. Um, at the end of this session, and it will be displayed for you. Mm -hmm.